I'm sitting here today in our offices in the Stutz building of Indianapolis uh, with my good friend John Panazzo. I've known him for years and we're going to talk about printing today. John's with uh, Colorbyte and they make a product called Image Print. And Image Print has been a godsend to me. Um, those of you that have been following me for years know that I'm all about the print. And for many, many, many years, you know, till you know, maybe five to 10 years ago, you couldn't have photography without having a print. That's and right. um, we are in a completely different society today. You know, our, we, we are in our swipe society. We see pictures on Instagram, on our iPads, iPhones, mobile devices, computers. You know, we're swiping, you know, right and left. And, you know, the key now is to be able to make an image strong enough that it stops you from swiping and at least look at it. Mm -hmm. But there's still nothing that can replace holding that print and looking at the nuances and actually slows you down enough, you know, almost in a contemplative way and, and seeing the beauty of what that print is, you know, the, the details of what you couldn't even see with your eyes when you took that picture. When I started making my own prints, I was printing out of Photoshop and Lightroom and there was all sorts of dialogue boxes and check this, check that, calibrate this, analyze this, and it was mind boggling. And of course, early on when I was doing this, we had to make our own profiles because a lot of times the profiles made by the paper manufacturers weren't any good. And then it was a contest to see who could make the best paper profiles. And so I heard about Image Print, uh, which is your product uh, by Colorbyte. And it was a kind of a, they called it a RIP, Rasterized Image Processor, I believe, correct? Yeah, Raster and Image Processor. It was like an ability to take a file, put it in this thing, and scale it up or down whatever way you want, do step and repeat, and all those kind of things. Pick a paper profile and push a button and print. And once I used that, uh, I, I couldn't believe the quality I was getting. I wasn't making profiles. I didn't have to you know, make this profile, make sure that it was done properly, and then read it with a, a reader and make it all turn out properly. I just now basically got whatever paper I wanted, found the profile, downloaded it into image print, laid out my piece of paper and, and printed. And I could like lay out multiple pages. Mm -hmm. So at that time I was working with a 4800 printer and I could put a roll paper in and you know, lay out uh, you know, all these uh, prints in whatever fashion I wanted and walk away from the printer and just print them. I mean, it was uh, like amazing. This is where you know, my relationship with you has always grown because we've communicated a lot through the years and done some interesting projects. But your product makes printing your images easy. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're sitting here today because we're not only going to go over image print again um, you know, in its latest iteration. Uh, and we're going to go and look at something really cool and different, which we mm -hmm. believe will be a game changer for any of those that have struggled making prints. And specifically, if you're into uh, an area where you need to make multiple prints and like a wedding business or anything that requires a lot of specialty things. And the fact that you've taken what you're going to share with us today even further. I'm very excited about what the possibility is. So, John, tell us a little bit, first off, about the history of image print, and uh, then if you want to kind of show off a little bit about what we're going to mm -hmm. talk about later on, that'd be great. So this will be three parts. We're going to have this little introduction part. We're going to have a part where we lay out some images and go over the interface of, of image print itself. Right. And then we're going to get into this... Uh, you can, I don't know what your product name is going to be for it, but this magic device. Yeah, we, we do have a product name for it, and we'll, we'll talk about that. It's a, it's a fun name. Um, you mentioned the journey, and it's, it's been a long journey. We've known each other for, I think, over 20 years now. Probably, it seems for, forever. Uh, Color, Colorbyte itself is a 30-year-old company. Um, we date back all the way to the very first inkjet printer, which was the Iris printer. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of work on that device, developing software for the... Uh, uh, animation industry, motion picture industry, there was literally no way to, to print those digital um, animation cells and we developed that. Um, software ran on a silicon graphics machine. We were just yeah. chatting about the significance of various pieces of hardware um, that led us to where we are today and the amazing things that we can do um, for very little money when we consider what the costs sure. were you know, way back then. So the, you know, the journey uh, along the way has been marked by a lot of significant things. Um, I can remember back uh, seven, about 17 years ago when the first um, real photographic Epson printer came out. 
and we developed, we developed a small piece of technology called narrow gamut black and white. And as everybody was pulling their hair out, trying to do a true gallery quality black and white, something that you would do uh, back in the darkroom days, days, we were the first to develop that technology using the standard OEM ink set and treating it as a small gamut ink set mm -hmm. and being able to produce that type of black and white work um, just at the fingertips of anybody. And, and that really launched a, a series of innovations that, that Colorbyte software uh, produced over the years. And we're sort of, you know, sitting around over the last couple of years, we've had some conversations and going, what's next? Where's this industry going? What are we going to do? Um, just because you were relevant yeah. yesterday doesn't mean you're relevant today. It's a constant reinventing yourself. Right. You know. And uh, we talked to a, a lot of people um, in the industry, um, both from, from Epson and from Canon and, and different dealers that we work with. And, and uh, one of the reoccurring themes was with all of these inkjet printers out there, large format inkjet printers, and I'll, I'll say like 17 inches on up, um, you, you talk to folks and, and you say, well, how are you using your printer? What are you doing? And the, there was a common theme of, well, I only print big stuff, right? Yep. I just, yep. I print one off, I print it big. And you know, when I'm not printing something big, I'm really not using my printer. And you say, well, what are you doing for your regular photographic prints? And they, well, I'm, I'm just sending them to the lab. It's easier, I take them to Costco, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. And, and uh, I, I, just, I just can't deal with cutting them out, right? It's just, <laughs> it's just too much work. You know, if somebody walks in the door, a customer, um, you're, you're doing event photography, um, sports, wedding, oh. portrait work, school photography, which is big. We talked about that. And you need to produce, you know, a hundred prints, maybe a thousand prints over a weekend, uh, four by six, five by sevens, eight by tens. It, the, the thought of sitting on the floor with a, yep. a, a rotary cutter, <sighs> right, you know, would just drive people crazy. They just say, I'm not going to do it. I can't yeah, do it it's anymore. Nuts. It's too labor intensive. Um, and what, what we really looked at was how can we change that? How can we do something that would bring not only the creativity back into printing, but really take a large format printer and turning it into its own mini lab. So be able to do all the photo finishing at a, at a push of a button. Well, <laughs> I've got uh, some major rotor trimmer printers back there, you know, all the way up to, um, you know, 40 inch wide uh, paper. And uh, I know Michael, who's our videographer, you know, he makes prints, I make prints, and, you know, we're forever just on these tables with these two cutters, you know, slicing and dicing, mm -hmm. you know, and every print requires, you know, four alignments, four pushbacks and fourths. And, you know, you got into any kind of quantity of work, it was ridiculous. And yep. so th that is and always has been a hampering, specifically for those that were going into portrait and yep. wedding things where you're doing a lot of small prints and different sizes. But even big things, if if I want to produce a, a 16 by 20 or anywhere in between that, and I want an inch or an inch a half of white space around that, or even a top bottom different than a, a bottom margin different than a top margin, you know, it, I don't have to print crop marks anymore, right? Oh, I can just turn on my cutting feature. It will generate, I tell it how much offset I want from the image and it generates a perfect cut every yeah. single time. And even with the crop marks, after you've cut off three sides, you lost all the you rest lost of the all crop the rest marks. Of them. So it, it made it difficult right. there too. So this, this is, um, I've seen this thing run. And uh, obviously when you see that, that video, uh, you'll be pretty amazed at it, but it goes further than just, you know, photography. I mean, you can do ovals with this. You can do right. designs. You can do all sorts of crazy things. Yeah. So, so when we first got approached with with doing this project, the the thought was, wow, if you could just do rectangles, rounded corners, and ovals, it would be great. It would just change the world, right? And so we did that. You know, we. You can show you some samples here. We have rectangles. Uh, this has uh, a spread on it, so you have a oh, nice so have white a, margin yeah, there. A borders, borders on this one. Right, right. Here's an oval. Um, you can do ovals, and you can do circles too, right? 
right? I mean, any. I mean, just look at. There, this is uh, you can never do this unless you were using an exacto knife. Before. Rounded corners, right? So, oh man, you know and you can change the radius of the rounded corner too, correct? Absolutely, on the fly. You see it on the screen. Oh, the um, oh, you know, everything's visual. Uh, you lay out anything you want, any sizes, anywhere you want on our layout window, and when you hit print, we generate all the cut vectors on the fly. The user does nothing. So the cut vectors, it's, essentially, what you, if you haven't figured out by now, we're talking about a sheet-fed automated cutter that reads the data off the page layout from image print. Correct. And so one of the things, if you've never watched this before and you'll see in the second video, is that image print has a smart feature and you can basically take all these different size images and it lays it out smartly for the size of the sheet mm -hmm. you're working with. And you know, before we would have to hand cut those, sometimes I would cut parts of it with a scissor and then put it in a paper cutter. Uh, and now you can run you know, any size width, depending on the size cutter you have, and the stuff is cut automatically. And when you see this, I mean, it's just going like, oh my God, because I've never seen anything like it. When I was in the printing business, we were just happy if we could get an XY cutter where, you know, it would cut between mm -hmm. uh, units and maybe cut four, four by fives apart. But uh, this is taking it to a level you wouldn't believe. And yeah, I can't we, wait to show this to you. This, that'll be the fun part when we get to that later on. We took it to the uh, photo shows at the beginning of the year, PPA and WPPI. Uh, it was still in prototype at that time. People literally stood in the, in the, the aisle way with oh, I can imagine staring at it. The wedding right? photographers had to go nuts <laughs> just, on this just stuff. Never had seen anything like it in their lives. And the, these cutters have been around for a long time. They're, they, they come from the vinyl cutting industry. Yeah. But nobody had written the logic to cut paper. We were the first ones. And you'd say, well, it just makes sense. You know? And when you see it, you'll, you'll say, oh, it's just so easy. Why hasn't anybody done it before? But really, we, we make it look easy. It was anything but easy. There was <laughs> points along the way where you know, we all sat there and wondered, you know, can we really make it happen? Because you, when you think about cutting things out of paper, you, you, you have to look at maintaining the structure of the paper as you cut, right? So if things fell out of the paper while you cut it, then the integrity of that paper would, would lessen and sooner or later it would just get all out of shape and the cutter right. would jam and everything else. So you have to keep everything in place with what we call a hanger system. So we had to design a hanger system that worked for photographs and we allow the, the user to actually tailor that hanger system based on how they're cutting and what they're cutting. Um, and then we had to figure out how to sort the cuts to go from hardest to easiest. So we, we had to study how the page breaks down as you cut it. Because of different tensions. Because there's different tensions. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then look at those, look at everything that's on the layout that the user has done and on the fly, figure out which cuts were gonna be the hardest, easiest, <laughs> sort them all, and then cut. So we make it we make it look so you, really you, you simple. Have a, you have one there that you're, you're holding in your hand, right? So so we we did the basics first. Yep. We you know cutting and finishing photographs, but then we started thinking, well, if if you have this equipment in your studio or in your home, where you know wherever you have it, how can you use it now to promote your brand, yep. right? So what we wanted to say is, this is great. This is the bread and butter, right? Yep, yep. People come in, they want photographs. They want it finished. Now you don't have to send that work off. You can do it yourself easily. But now when you're not doing that and you're promoting your business, how would you use this equipment to promote your business? So we started looking at specialty cutting, like doing promotional pieces where you have a tear off section. Oh, so I'll, I'll like just, a ticket. I'll tear this off, oh. right? So, <laughs> so we looked at, well, how do we work in specialty cutting to this so that it's easy, yeah. right? And and then we looked at, so coming up with a syntax language at, so that you can name cut paths in Photoshop. So you draw a path in sure, Photoshop. Right. Uh, this is an open path. We name it a certain name. When you load that PSD file into image print, we go, oh, there's a cut path there. And this is, we want that to be a tear off. And we automatically control the cutter for that path for so a tear off. So you can have a tear off and you can have, so that's a different hanging system. Not right. the same hanging system. It doesn't it's fall a different, off. Right. It doesn't fall off right. as easy. So it's a, yeah, and, and we can make it even, you know, so it, it's, it's harder to get off. So we have all these different ways on the fly to control the cutter. So I can cut this boundary out, right, with a hanger system where literally we saw one where we yeah. took it out of the cutter, 
and it, it comes out so easy. It just like right, it's it amazing. Wait till you see it because it is it is pretty right. cool. And so, and then we have these specialty cuts, and they all happen at the same time based on how we see these paths named, right? So we can uh, we can even score fold lines and and all kinds of stuff if we're if we're making folders, for example. Yeah, look at this. This is one. Hand. This is something which <laughs> it's funny. We when we talked about this, and I saw the first videos that you shared. You know, I only thought photographs, and then you bring this by, and so not only can you do the photographs, but you can make the band that goes around a folio, right. and... So that's it, called a belly band. Yeah, belly band, but it's like a CNC machine. You can right. actually set a design that right. you printed, and I presume you're gonna provide mm -hmm. some different designs, yeah. and it even cuts these things out, correct? It cuts the shapes out for so, that. So, you know, you can make a five so by seven stock. folio card stock, you know, you could probably set it so, you know, can, you know, even in, you know, do part of your name, but holy cow, this, this now means, you know, I can make my own portfolio, limited print runs. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, I mean, when I saw this, that I thought right away was, wow, look at this. So what I've always wanted to do, and I did this by hand, so you can imagine what it was like after making 500 yep. of these, I would make, you know, my own little business cards with my photographs on them. So every card was individual, and I could tailor out who I gave the cards to. And, of course, I made this particular yep. card, which was two-sided. So not yep. only do you have the card... But you know, you'd open it up, and then there was a bigger folio picture in it. Now I can go into production on these, yep. and God, they could be done left and right. And, and it, image I, image print already registers front and back, so you can print on double sided media. And now you can do your calendars, you know, specialty cards, greeting cards. Um, we look at all of the different things that you can do to promote and sell your images on. Yeah. We can cut shapes, as we've seen with things like this, but just putting. You know, have you ever looked through a, a, a box of vintage photographs? Oh, all the time. I mean, I'm always taking my photographs. Right. And I actually use the Epson Fast Photo right. Scanner and scan them so I have, you know, a little digital file of them. So you, you remember the, uh, the old-fashioned scalloped edges yeah, yeah. and whatnot? Well, they're, they're so hard to produce. They, they had to be die cut, you know, or special, special cutters that would, would cut this designed edge. Yeah, you know, I had a, a deco cutter, uh, you know, which was one of the oh, cool. guillotine yeah. cutters yeah, that did that. Right. We do it on the fly now. Oh, this is so cool. So we, we uh, you know, we've, we've always had the ability to, to uh, put together a, a, a decorative border with a photo, right? Uh, for doing, you know, announcements, cards, sports cards, and things like that. Well, now we can take a, an edge, right? Uh, let's say a vintage photo edge um, of any design, uh, save it as a vector, an SVG file out of Illustrator or CorelDRAW, wherever. Um, we're going to have a library of edges, too, that we, we provide. And drop it right on the photograph in image print. <laughs> set the offset oh of where God. you want to cut into the photo, outside of the photo. Hit print, load it into the cutter, and, and there's your edge. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, double matte prints where I can make a, you know, a 1620 and then a 15 by 19 or something. And, you know, be able to die cut those so they lay on top of each other. And, you know, oh, oh my heavens, my mind is already uh, singing. We can even cut the punch outs for binders. Uh, so we can we can cut the punch out holes. So, you know, on this particular one, I really love this one because you've... Uh, really, That's just a sticker. And it's a sticker, but you, you did the cut off edges on it. And, you know, we were able to stick it right on right. here. So you're using a, a so, piece of paper. So here again... This is that same image cut on a high gloss photographic paper and cut. And, Jesus, and now I can it? say, take that same design and now cut it on an adhesive vinyl and have stickers. <laughs> um, I can do thank you tags. Here's a, we'll pull one out here. Um, this is a thank you tag right here. And you can see the hole punched out right there. Uh. So now you deliver your print and you have a nice thank you tag. <laughs> put on it oh and my god this is i mean this is you know i think pretty much you know i've always said to myself you know if the mind can think it we can do it you know, and, and that's what we really wanted to do we we wanted to bring sort of the a creativity back into printing oh. i think that when when the technology first came out 15 17 years ago everybody flooded to it to buy it it was I mean, you didn't have to have chemicals in the dark room in your basement anymore, right? And but then as people used it, they they kind of got a sense to, well, it's just not as easy as it looked, or it's not as easy as I thought it would. And I had all these ideas, but when it really came down to producing them, it was more difficult than I thought it would be. 
Um, we're going to change all that. <sighs> we're going to we're going to say let that creativity really run wild, and we're going to allow you to do just about anything you can think up. This is really cool. So what we're going to do next, we're going to um, do a, a, a short segment, maybe it's a little longer segment, knowing the way you and I get, but yeah. we're going to go over image print. And an image print comes in two versions, a red and a black, and we'll talk about what those two mm -hmm. versions are. And we'll give you a, a run through of the interface so you can actually see you know, how you can lay out you know, images on image print and understand how the whole thing works. And it's a very mm -hmm. logical kind of system, drag and drop. Once you get into it, it's really very, very cool. Um, we'll have a discussion a little bit about the pricing because you, you, it's based upon the width of your printer and, of course, the different kind of printers you work with and what version of mm -hmm. image print you, you work with. And then we're going to come in, we're going to take a look at this. Uh, this whole cutter idea and where it's going. But more than anything else, and what you guys could comment on, not only on this video, but uh, on the forum section of our, our site, is that John and I have been considering um, uh, doing a workshop on image print right here in Indianapolis in the gallery in the studio. We've certainly set up for it. And you can come and not only learn how to use image print, but learn all the things that go along with using image print to become a better marketer, or a better producer of products. So if you're doing any kind of uh, fine art photography and you just want to learn how to make uh, folios, we'll show you how to do that. If you want to learn how to uh, get into doing things differently, if you're a portrait wedding photographer, we can cover that. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Think about this now. You know, you don't have to do hand cutting and, and, and so forth. With this printer, you basically go into an automated mode and you can do it with roll paper. So you can actually load the roll mm -hmm. that you've printed on if you're doing roll paper, walk away from it, and everything will just you know fall out and you know, you've got these sheets and you're ready to separate them and deliver them. Yeah. So uh, there's some real interesting possibilities here. And you know, if you're interested in maybe seeing a workshop developed like that, let us know, because we're trying to figure out whether you know there would be interest. And if there is, we've got the facility to put it on, we've got the talent to do it, we've got the enthusiasm. And you know, if you like photography and you want to learn how to be a better part of the, a better printer and be able to actually enjoy prints on a bigger scale, this could be for you. Mm -hmm. For example, those people that go on my workshops, many times I talk to people on my workshops, and you know, we spend a week out in some remote location and they take some great pictures. Maybe they make one, maybe two prints, you know, big, and mm -hmm. all these other images are never anything done with. We can show you how to make a folio like this, put your 10, 12 favorite photos in there, mm -hmm. and have something that can sit on a coffee table or even a book where you can open them up and share with your friends and family. I mean, we're talking the ability to take the tactile beauty of a print, not only from a wall, but into something that you can hand around at a dinner yeah. party or give as gifts. The, the possibilities are endless. So if you're interested in something like that, let us know. And if there is a good response, we'll do this. I mean, that's all there is to it because we're both as passionate about printing and all this cool stuff that you can be. So anything else to add? No, let's get going. Uh, we'll be back in the next video where we highlight image print, how it works and, and how the layout system works and everything. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for visiting PhotoPXL. If you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button to be notified.